So I saw this uh, Houdini advanced disintegration effect by Yesho and I thought we could try it in Blender. You can see we have a rigid body system, a procedural fracturing system, pieces break off and then it collapses completely. So that's what we're going to do and we're going to try and do it in a procedural fashion. So uh, yeah, I have a skull here ready. Links in the description if you want to get any of these and also if you want to watch this video. Yeah, let's first set up a particle system, disintegrate this, add a new particle system. If I hit play, you can see the particles are just falling. If, if I use an explode, I can see the, the meshes are turned into the particles and I can go to the particle system and under render, change the render as to object and leave the, the instance empty so that I only see the faces. I'm also going to go under velocity, make sure this is set to zero, go under field weights, turn the gravity all the way down, switch on the size and cut edges to add some random cuts. Uh, so if I have size on, I can go to the particle system. Make sure that you are viewing this at frame one. Otherwise, if you are frame zero, you won't see any effect. Turn on size and uh, when you go to the particle system and play with this size, you can see that these chunks are shrinking. Make sure the end frame is the same as the start frame. Control the size of these here as long as I have this size option on. If you don't want to see any of the gaps, make sure the scale is set to one and you won't see any of that. Have it like that so that we can see the disintegration happening. Uh, now, if I add a decimate modifier above the particle system and go to the particle system and make sure that the source is using is use modifiers, I can easily come here and adjust my shapes a bit. You can also go to the particle system and set this to maybe a hundred so we don't have too many chunks. Add a solidify modifier. I don't want any intersecting issues like that so I want to keep it very small. Okay so after we're done with this we can use Control A to apply visuals to mesh. Now go into edit mode and hit P lose parts so that we have uh, our chunks like this. Select all of these, right click Set origin to geometry so that the origin is recalculated to its center. Select everything, go to object, rigid body, add active. If I hit play, I need to go to the first flame. I can see everything just shoots out. Now you can go under object, rigid body, connect and have these connected into one piece. But uh, one thing you will notice if I add a plane and give this object, rigid body, passive and hit play, you can see it doesn't hold as you expect. There is a lot of gaps and uh, it just doesn't work very fine. For this to hold correctly, these constraints have to be at the center of their connection. So for example, if you want the two pieces to be glued together without any gaps, you have to make sure that uh, when you connect, so if I go an object, rigid body, connect, this constraint is close, it's at the center that's why you see that uh, this, these two pieces are now glued. There isn't a big gap between them. So this constraint has to be in the center of uh, the two pieces for that to happen. But the connect add-on doesn't do that. If I try that again, you can see it adds a lot of gaps. These are not at the center of uh, the connected pieces. That's why you see we get this weird artifact. So I knew I had to use some Python to do that. Uh, but I didn't want to figure out the code necessary to, to handle that. So I relied on chat GPT. And uh, so we went back and forth and brainstorming how we could do that. So I asked it to write uh, some code. I tested it. It got some errors. I went back and uh, we talked about it. And my boy was uh, very, very hopeful. You can see we went back and forth, back and forth for a very, very long time until we came out. Uh, with something that I think worked. So I've been working on uh, on this add-on uh, with my boy ChatGPT uh, to get this to work. So so I basically, with the help of ChatGPT, I turned all the steps uh, that uh, you saw me do into an add-on called Quick Destroy. So let's go back to our, our original skull and just redo this, but in a much faster way using the add-on I created using ChatGPT. So yeah, the first thing was to fracture this. I'll, I'll just do a fracture option and you can see I already have the fracturing done. So I can select this and come here and uh, reduce these particles. Let's use a hundred and uh, I think that's good enough. Uh, you can again scale this down to see the different shapes you have, but if you put this value to one, you won't see the cracks at all. Yeah, this is what AI should be used for. Just creating tools uh, to make your life easier. And if you hit separate, uh, it will just create a copy of this, uh, this skull. Basically, this is where we left off without the add-on and uh, we had this set as a rigid body and I added some buttons to do that 
as well instead of just going up here it can access all of that here so hit play we get that and i'm going to add a plane hit play all chunks fall down like that and uh, let's try out the new connection tool so i'm going to make a copy here and for this i'm going to use the original connect and you can see if i play back you see how things fall apart and uh, there is a lot of gaps there and now if i select this i have a new make connection option here uh, that i can select and i uh, just make connections okay so this has done its calculation and uh, you can see even the pieces themselves make up the shape of the skull i can see that from the side as well here one thing i couldn't figure out is the shape always comes up a, a bit offset and not in the exact position so you can usually just scale them up and uh, move it a bit until the pieces are line up correctly and i have to do this from the side as well if we play you can see now we get a better connection with less gaps between each piece now you can see this holds up much better than uh, this done by done using with the connect add-on so and uh, if you want to select just the connections you can just select everything and uh, use the select connections and you have those selected add something like an empty scale it down and i uh, select the chunks so shift g i'll select by collection and then parent this to this using ctrl p i can move this around fairly easily and even rotate it the way i want uh, we don't need this anymore so i'm just going to select that remove that yeah so i can easily change the initial position just like that and uh, everything is good okay so now let's try and fracture it in the same way as this these constraints here are what controls how this is fractured these constraints if you enable breakable you can break them and admit the the break threshold so i'll just hold on out and then click on breakable so that they are breakable if we play back they fall but they're not breaking because the threshold is too high if i put this at something like let's say 0 0.1 it play now you can see everything just falls apart we don't want it to just shatter like that we want it to be more like this so a small piece breaks off and then another one breaks off actually i think in my original render uh, it shows that even better so so the fracturing is not instant you can see pieces break off and then uh, the the, uh, the rest collapse first bring back the threshold let's set it to 50 hit play everything is intact so let's say we want this half here to break fast uh but then this doesn't uh, i only want to have this these connections selected so i'll just select that and uh, i want again to unmate so on the first bounce so i'll unmate this threshold so i'll just keyframe that and then go to frame like 20 and turn this to zero so that everything breaks but uh, you notice that it's only going to work for one piece uh, it's not applied to the rest of the pieces because we have just key only keyframed the active constraint so i'm just going to use ctrl l to link the animation to all the sel other selected connections so now should yeah fracture just like that let's see how this looks yeah and then we can select the rest you can select let's let me first hide this yeah we can select the rest i'm just going to select those constraints and uh, the rest but before we do that uh, so we have two sets of animation we have this chunk and then this piece that falls next and uh, they all have linked animations all these constraints are sharing the same animation if you ch if you change one uh, all of them all of them are going to change so what i'm going to do is just select all of them shift g and just go under object relations make single user object animation so in case we select any of these and change them we don't change the others so let's go there make sure that they break so i want to animate 
the breakable here. We start at that threshold and then they all collapse by changing the threshold back to zero. Again, control L, link animation so that the selected ones have the same animation. So let's play back. That piece breaks, the jaw breaks, and then the rest breaks. Thus, yeah, basically the same disintegration we have uh, there. You can see it's collapsing onto itself. Okay, so we are halfway done because we need to add a secondary particle system for the full disintegration. So, yeah, so when working here, make sure that all your chunks, for example, these, these chunks are all in a single collection and uh, the, the quick destroy add-on will do that for you automatically and make sure also these uh, constraints are in their own collection and again, uh, the quick destroy uh, add-on will do that for you. Yeah, so let's add the secondary particles for this. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go to the rigid body setting and make sure that I catch a, my simulation. So I'll bake the simulation so that nothing changes as we are working with geometry nodes to add the secondary particles. To add the secondary particles, I, I can actually just hide this. I need to hide this first. Add a plane. This is going to hold our geometry nodes. And the geometry nodes is just two nodes. I just import in uh, this. If I look at that, we only need to realize these instances. Uh, that way we can use a particle system onto this. So yeah, just set up a plane, add a realized instance, bring in the collection and realize the instance and uh, you should be good to go. So now we can add a particle system. A particle system to this. If the particles are coming from the center, just go to the source and make sure you use modifiers. Uh, again, now you can see what we have. I'm going to select this plane, give it a collision option so that the particles don't go through it just like that they can bounce off I'm going to come here to the particle system I make sure the end frame uh, these particles I want the particles to start emitting around here frame 85 and uh, what we want to render we want to render objects but add not nothing in the instance and go to the modifiers and again add a de explode modifier and we can now hit play, see where we are. And I can see now the particles disintegrate. I'm going to remove the gravity from the particles. Yeah, then another thing we could add is some turbulence. Uh, let's say five, a size of two. Hit play. Yeah, you can see what we have. Uh, then we can come here and also add some random rotation. Just randomize everything. Uh, make sure it's dynamic and use a velocity of uh, an angular velocity of two. And maybe angular velocity of let's say ten. Yeah, and uh, they are dying too early, so let's do. 250 and uh, the end frame can be 100 uh, so that we have a lot of particles at once so yeah something like that now the rest you can add a small effect uh, we're just adding a domain and selecting the particle system giving it a, a fluid system flow and uh, the type smoke and inflow and uh, should uh, uh, be able to get some dust particles uh, like that Everything else is just lighting, setting up the camera, and uh, that's it. So this is our final results. Yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.